Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody give God a round of applause. Come on, it's all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. We want to thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many feel the presence of the Lord in the house? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We, uh, this is our second service of the day. Amen. We have one more service. Amen. And we have made it this way so that people uh, can have some room. Amen. That way you can bring visitors. Amen. Bring your, your groups, your visitors, and let them experience the power of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So we want you to bring somebody. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, bring somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let God move in their life. And we thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Somebody's going to get filled with the Holy Ghost here today. Come on, somebody. How many believe in here today that somebody's going to get filled with the power and the glory of the Holy Ghost? They are not going to walk out the same way they walked in. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. We just thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace. How many came hungry to hear the word of God? Amen. Praise the Lord. I came hungry. Turn to your neighbor and tell him I came hungry. Let's do this. Ain't nothing to do but to do it. Can you say amen, church? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him handle your business. There we go. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We just want to thank the Lord, amen, for, amen, for uh, the brother missionary that came today. Amen. Brother Parkey. Amen. Parkey. Amen. Brother Parkey. Amen. He's going to be going out to Spain with the help of the Lord in January. And he'll be out there with Brother, <laughs> brother Jess in Europe which would be awesome. They're over there in Greece, and he's over there in Spain. Amen. And I thank the Lord, amen, that young men have a desire and a passion for missionary work. Young men have a passion, a desire for missionary work to do whatever thus saith the Lord. I just appreciate men of God like that. That's so powerful to me. I thank God that you are being led of the Lord and letting God do what he has to do. Amen. Whether it is the next town over or whether it's the next country over. Can you say amen, church? Amen. We thank God for all of that. We thank God for men that are called, amen, and not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace. Amen. We need young men to stand up in these last days and be sent of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's all stand right now. Amen. We want to go ahead and definitely... Receive the preacher for today. Amen, Brother Parkey, to go ahead and come on up. Amen, and preach to us whatever thus saith the Lord. Dios le bendiga. I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord today. I feel such a expectation in the house today that God is going to do something great. And as I was sitting over there, I feel the Holy Ghost now. But I feel that the Lord wants to operate in the prophetic gifting today. And that there are some things and that there are some burdens that people have had for a long time. That you have been praying for, whether it's a promise, whatever that is for you today. But I feel that God wants to do something special in you today. But the thing about prophecy is prophecy does not... Prophecy is not fulfilled in your mind. Sometimes we have good expectations. We can maybe think for something that's going to happen. But I believe that if today you will begin to speak into existence what God has been promising you. If you will say, God, I've had a son that's been lost for a while. I've got a brother. I've got a sister. What, whoever it is for you today. If, you, if somebody's sick in your life. If whatever that promise is that God has given to you. If you will begin to speak. The Bible says that whenever we use our mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speaks. So that thing that you want today, 
that thing that you desire. The Lord desires in giving us what we want. And, and sometimes God gives us not what we want, but what we need, right? Amen. But I believe today that God wants to honor some promises today. That God wants to fulfill some promises today. So I wonder if just before we get started today, if you would just begin to lift your hands and say, God, whatever you want today. God, outside of, the, of my own desires, Lord, you, you've made some promises to me. God, you, you've told me some things. You've made some promises to me, God, in this place. And Lord, I haven't come to this place just to, to fulfill my own needs. But God, I'm here today because you've made some promises. Because Lord, you died on a cross for me. Because God, I'm here to serve you. So Lord, whatever your will is today, whatever you want for me today, God. Lord, I prophesy, God, that in this church, God, you would begin to raise up a generation. That you would begin to raise up people in this city, God, that would begin to be on fire for your name's sake. God, that every person that they meet, that they would begin, God, to feel an unction of your spirit, an unction of your power. God, not by my might, not by my power, but Lord, by your spirit, saith the Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I feel the power of the glory in this place. In Jesus' name. I want to give where honor where honor is due. The Corneo family, you are blessed with amazing leadership. From the moment that I stepped on this campus today, everything has been done with excellence. And, and I believe that God honors that. So, uh, And I know, obviously, by all of you wonderful people here, that God is honoring that and that God is working. But, but something uh, that, that your pastor just said struck a chord for me. And as I looked on the screen, it, it was the spiritual maturity series. And I heard a quote the other day, and it said, in the, in the New Testament Bible, the gauge of a spiritually mature person is winning disciples. The gauge of a spiritually mature person is winning disciples. When you look in the Old Test in the New Testament, whenever you look at what Jesus' commandment was for us to do, it was to go, therefore, to teach, baptizing them, but making disciples. So if you want to grow in the Lord, if you want God to honor your steps, if you want to grow in, in the spirit, if you want to get to that next level, that next dimension, the best thing you can do is what Pastor said, is you bring somebody to church. You may not know how to do it. You, not, you may not know where to start. But I promise you, if you will put yourself out there and you say, hey, you know what? Come to church with me. If you will just be a witness, God will begin to honor it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name once again thank you so much to the Cornejo family they've been so gracious to us and I do want to get into the word of the Lord today and I will uh, I will read so can I, I can allow you guys to, to be seated for a little while but I, I, I just don't want you to stay there in Jesus name but my text is out of Exodus chapter 24 verses 15 and 16 a very familiar passage of scripture about a guy named Moses. Everybody say Moses. Exodus chapter 24 verse 15 and 16. If you haven't, say amen. The Bible says, And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Everyone say six days. The cloud covered it for six days, and on the seventh day he called unto Moses. You may be seated. I want to talk to you today about divine delays. How many of you have ever had to wait on something? I can think back to a time where I had to confront delay head on in my life. And I was seven years old. It was my seventh birthday. And as a seven year old, I was under the impression that when it was your birthday, that everything that you said went. 
and I would soon find out I was wrong. At my birthday, I decided that presents were the most important happening of the evening, that that was what I wanted first at my birthday party, and it was my party. So I thought that I could say, hey, I want presents, and it would happen. And, and so I told my mom, hey, mom, I, I want some presents now. And she told me, if you can wait about 10 minutes, we will eat cake, we will sing happy birthday, and then we will open presents. And I didn't like that idea. So with all the courage and fortitude that a young 7-year-old could muster up, I boldly stood up and proclaimed, I want to open presents now. And you can imagine, you know, I grew up in California, and, and my mom has, has uh, I, I like to say I, I'm, I'm, I'm white on the outside, but I'm Mexican on the inside. So they call me Huero growing up. So my, my mom has a little bit of that in her too, and, and, and some of you mothers in, in the house can maybe understand what was going through my mom's head whenever I got up and screamed that I want to open presents now. And once again, I don't know what I was expecting to come of this bold proclamation, and I guess I was hoping that after stating my point that we would open presents. But that wasn't what happened. Instead, I got a pop to my mouth in front of everybody. And it hurt my feelings. I was humiliated, and I, I went away from the crowd, and I found a seat on the staircase close by because I had just gotten popped in the mouth at my own birthday party. And my dad, after a few moments of realizing that I wasn't at my birthday party, came over with a, a recorder. And so somewhere out there, there's a video of me and an interaction that I had with my father asking me, hey, buddy, why aren't you downstairs at your party? To which I responded, mom broke my heart. Feel it, it's not beating. Turn to your neighbor and say, divine delay. How many of you know that sometimes we want things, but it's better for us to wait for them? And I believe that we live in a world that wants things at our fingertips. We want it now. Desire it now. We, we want things immediately. And, and here we have this passage of Scripture. And what an opportunity that Moses is here. And God wanted to share his special plan for his special people with him. And Moses was surely thinking, God wants to meet with me. And, and was doing everything within his power to treasure this opportunity. You have to imagine, God says, I want to meet with you. The excitement that, that must come with that. I want you to go up to this mountain, and I, and I want you to go alone. And I, I don't want you to bring Aaron and her with you this time. I, I just want you to go alone, and I'm going to begin to speak to you. The excitement, the, the anticipation that was probably there. And Moses, at this point, probably has a whole lot to be grateful for. For he's about to hear what God wants for his people. But... Even before God spoke a word, before He released an artifact that would become a pillar to the people of Israel, God called Moses up to a mountain for six cloudy days. If Pastor Cornejo called me to a meeting, if he said, I want you to meet in my office just like before service we did today, I would go to that office. But if Pastor Cornejo told me I have a word for God from you, I would go to this meeting anticipating him to speak that word to me. And I would do whatever I could do to make it to this meeting. But once this meeting started, I would not expect to wait for days on end for Pastor Cornejo to tell me what the Lord had spoken to him. So one thing to keep in mind here is that Moses did not call this meeting. Moses did not tell God, I'm, I'm having a prayer meeting and I want you to meet me there. I, I'm going up to the mountain at this time and I'm just praying that you'll show up. But God called the meeting. God told him to go up the mountain. God told him that I will meet you there. And scripture does not tell us, but I cannot help but wonder how Moses handled the six days before the promise. God, you've made some promises to me. You've called me to this place. God, I'm, I'm up here now. Can you hear me? Many times in the waiting, 
We force ourselves into choosing ministries that are attractive instead of ministries that are paramount. Instead of ministries that are essential. We, we, we see things that, that we like instead of seeing things that are needed. And we accept them because we refuse to sit in the waiting. We start questioning the promises that God has made to us in the waiting. God, did, did I do something wrong? Did, did I hear you wrong? Did, did someone forget to tell me something? When the cloud came, God's glory was in that cloud. And everything that Moses knew about God led him to believe that he was there. But why wasn't God speaking? Day one, I'm, I'm okay. Day two, I'm, I'm starting to wonder a little bit. Day three, I'm confused. Day four, I'm starting to doubt what I heard. Day five, I'm frustrated, maybe even a little bit angry. And day six, I'm thinking about walking back down the mountain. And day seven, now God begins to speak. You see, Moses could have gotten frustrated in the waiting, but he recognized that God was up to something. I think now, as I said more than ever, waiting has become something that is countercultural. But waiting... And, and this delay has always been a method that God has used in His people to grow them. It's always been a method that He has used to strengthen them. And God was doing something in His servant Moses. And Moses didn't necessarily have any idea what was going on. But he understood that when the glory of God was upon the mountain, even though God was not speaking, he was okay because he knew that God was there. And I want to speak to someone today that maybe you feel like you're in a season where God has not been revealing some things to you. But I wonder if someone today could look back to a promise that God made to them in a time long ago. And you would say, God, maybe I'm going through some things right now. Maybe I'm going through a storm. Maybe I haven't heard your voice in just a little while. But today, God, I hear your voice. Today, I, I'm longing for your voice. And maybe Maybe the reason why God is causing you to wait is so that you're hungry to hear His voice. In Jesus' name. I may be delayed, but I am not denied. What is God asking us to consider in the seasons between promises and miracles? The seasons between prophecy and fulfillment. Can His presence be enough to maintain our attention in the waiting or are miracle signs and wonders required? Is it possible today for you to simply rest in God's presence or do you need all the extra stuff? God knows that delay will quicken and increase desire. The waiting teaches us to value the gift of His presence alone. God's favor rests upon those who maintain the attitude of God. I am just glad and grateful to be in your presence. I understand what happened on the seventh day and that God did indeed give the tablets to His humble servant Moses. But God valued the relationship with His servant more than He valued the radical signs are tablets more important to us than presence? What God was doing up there is He was strengthening a relationship with someone who already followed Him, who's already been faithful to Him, who's already done the right thing. But God was doing something in Moses in the waiting. What do we come to church for? Maybe God was seeing if... He would, if the waiting would expose flaws in Moses' character or defects in, in, in his character, maybe he, he was trying to show Moses some things. But I want you to understand today that God responds to our prayers. But His time frame is not manipulated by them. God does not abort the process for your idea of progress. God does not rush things of high spiritual importance. The end result of the tablets was not as important as the relationship that he was establishing with the one who would carry him down the mountain. I believe today that I'm speaking to a people that, that your waiting has become 
a war zone and, and, and you've had promises from the Lord and maybe you, you've come to this place and, and you've been waiting a long time for some things that God has promised to you and, and you're a little bit frustrated and you're, you're in that six days just like Moses and you're thinking, God, you called me to this place. God, I'm doing the right thing. God, I, I feel like I'm, I'm doing what you called me to do, but Lord, I'm not seeing the tablets right now. I'm not seeing the miracles being poured poured out, but God, I, I'm here for you, and, I, and I'm here for you, but Lord, I just want some confirmation right now that I'm doing the right thing, that even though the promise is yet to be fulfilled, that I'm in the right place, and I want to tell someone today that if you are in the house of God, that you are in the right place at the right time, there is no greater place to be on a Sunday afternoon than right here in this place. If you need something from God, whether you are in the waiting, or whether you are in fulfillment, if you're in the blessing, this is the best place to be on a Sunday afternoon because when you step into, the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And when you begin to step into the house of God, it is an activation of your faith. Whenever you begin to step into the house of God, you say, God, I'm putting it in your hands. And you're coming with open hands and saying, God, I am here for you. It's not me. This is not what I want, but God, I'm putting it in your hands. In Jesus' name, God wants to show some things to somebody. God wants to encourage somebody today in the waiting. God wants to show you that you are not alone, that He will never forsake you, that He will never leave you, but you are in the right place at the right time. Today, if you have come for a miracle, I promise you that if you will begin to call upon the name of the Lord, if you come today to be baptized, if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, God will begin to do a work in you, if you have never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it is the greatest gift that you can ever receive. God wants to do it for you today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Presence alone must be a priority. Not the miracles. Not the great outpourings. Yes, yes, we look for those. Yes, those are the blessings of God. But God wants us to be comfortable just in His presence. Moses never stopped expecting what had not yet come to pass. Moses never got offended that the promise had not yet been fulfilled. And I believe that if Moses had gone up there and if he had he walked back down the mountain because he was frustrated. God, you called me up here. God, you told me if I would show up to this mountain that you would speak to me. That God would have had to use a different vessel. That God would have had to use somebody else. And I, I, I don't want God to be trying to use me in a moment, but, but, but I miss an opportunity with Jesus because I'm not willing to wait on the promise that he's already given to me. In Jesus' name. I'm convinced that God was not trying to awaken Moses' faith in the waiting. He was trying to mature it. God was asking, will Moses wake up the next day as hungry to hear my voice after not hearing it as the day prior? Delay has always been a method that God has used to grow His people. Faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And faith in action is faithfulness. One of the greatest ways that you can begin to show your faith to God is to just be faithful, is to just show up, is to just pay your tithes. And sometimes we're asking God for things. Sometimes we're asking God to pour out His blessings on us and He's asked us to be faithful in the small things. But we can't even be faithful enough to show up to the house of God. And we want God to pour out His blessings on us. We have some promises that God has given to us. Okay, I want you to show up. Okay, I want you to be faithful. And we're saying, God, why haven't you fulfilled this promise? Maybe God's trying to show you some things in this place. Maybe God's brought you to this house today and He's brought you a preacher to say, hey, 
you know what? I, I need to get my priorities right, and I need to understand that God has a purpose for my life. That God's trying to encourage me. That God's trying to strengthen me. That God's trying to put something in me. I went to a Bible school in, in St. Louis, Missouri. And I was a, uh, I, I watched these three boys for my job while I was there. And uh, they were, they were, um, they weren't the best Christians, these young boys. They, they were from a, a Catholic family, so they would cuss at each other every once in a while. And I would have to say, hey, you guys need to take it easy. So I, I, was, uh, I was with these boys one day, and, and I, like to, I like to fish. So they told me that they wanted me to take them fishing. And so these three boys, these three brothers, I took them, and we're going fishing. And I set them up as good as I knew how to set them up. And I, and I, and I thought, you know what, one, between three of these guys and me, we're going to catch a fish. And so we went to this park that I had never fished before, and we began to fish. And we are there for 45 minutes, and we have caught nothing. Nothing. And these, these boys are, are looking at me, and they're, they're saying, hey, you're supposed to be a fisherman. What's going on? Why aren't we catching any fish? And I said, you know, so, so I, I thought about it for a second, and I said, you know what? This could be an opportunity for me to, to share the gospel with these boys. And so I said, you know what? I said, you guys have got sin in your lives. You guys have been cussing at each other. Been, you need to repent. You need to ask God to forgive you. I said, and maybe, maybe. I don't know. You guys have been cussing a lot. Maybe God, maybe God will forgive you. I said, but you've got to be genuine. You've got to ask God for forgiveness. So they're like, okay, we'll try it. We want to catch something. So we, we're at the park there, and I, I, we all held hands, and I led them in a prayer of repentance, and, and they asked God for forgiveness from their sins. And I can't make this up. The, the, the next time he goes, the, 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 the middle boy between the three, he goes, and the, as soon as he throws it into the water, boom, oh, oh. So all, all the boys, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But how many of you know that waiting sometimes, sometimes in the delay, sometimes when God asks us to wait, he, He's trying to, to show us some things. Matthew chapter 11, verse number 1 says, And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of, of commanding His twelve disciples, He departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. And now when John had heard, in the prison, the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou that he, art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The deaf are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preach to them and blessed is he who shall ever whosoever shall not be offended in me and so this is an interesting point in the text that that John had and, and not necessarily in this chapter if you if you read different gospels according to John's gospel John the Baptist was the first person to receive the revelation that Jesus was God John chapter 1 verse 26 says I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know, and it is he who coming after me is preferred before me, whose sandal straps I am not worthy to lose. And the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John recognized who Jesus was in this early chapter of John. So, so this Matthew chapter 11 is, 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 is a very different switch up, if you will, of, of I guess the mentality of John. And, and when we think about John, we think about how radical he was. We think about how zealous he was for the things of God. But here we have John in a prison cell in Matthew chapter 11. And, and he has been put in prison for preaching the very revelation that God has called him to preach. And he's sitting here, and I'm sure he's a little bit discouraged, and, I, and I'm sure he's wondering what is going on. I can only imagine what's going through his head or what he was thinking whenever he began to hear 
the rumors of his cousin Jesus. He had heard that Jesus and his disciples were having banquets and feasts. And John had preached repentance unto baptism and had had lived a life of of fasting. And and Jesus and his disciples were associated with drunkards and gluttons and sinners while John lived a life of, of fasting and sacrifice and want. And Jesus and his disciples seemed to be at these feasts and well fed and happy. And John began to compare his nights in the deserts, his meals of locusts, his beatings with someone else's ministry. John never experienced any miracles in his ministry. And John was sitting in this prison cell surely questioning some of the things, some of the previous promises that had been given to him, some of the previous revelations. And and, and surely he's sitting here and he begins to hear about what's going on in Jesus' life. And he begins to hear that Jesus is performing miracles, something that he has never seen. He begins to see that Jesus is associating with people that he didn't necessarily associate with. And John was surely questioning whether or not this was the behavior of a Messiah. And John started to get offended. He started questioning some things while he's sitting there. And he asks his disciples in those first verses of Matthew chapter 11, is this the Jesus that I had the same revelation of? Is this the same guy that I preached about? Are you sure that this is the same person? And he asks his disciples to go and to find Jesus and to say, are you the person that John has essentially given his life for? Are you the person? So here was John, lonely, broken, and discouraged after a lifetime of sacrifice, sitting in a jail cell while Jesus and his disciples moved in the light of day. And in the waiting, John started to get offended. In the waiting, John started to question these previous promises. In the waiting, John began to question what he had given his life to. In the waiting, John had some ideas about how things should be going. How many of you can testify that sometimes when God has his hand in something, you're like, God, I don't know what's going on. And that's exactly what John was thinking in this moment. But in the waiting, John got discouraged. So John's disciples came to Jesus asking the very question that John was pondering. Jesus, are you really the Messiah? Are you really God manifest in the flesh? Or should we just keep on waiting for somebody else? And it's interesting that Jesus does not respond with a yes, but instead he responds to John. Go and show John again those things which ye do hear. And see that the blind receive their sight, that the lame walk, that the lepers are cleansed, that the deaf hear, that the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And this is the part that gets me. And blessed, this is to John, is he who shall not be offended in me. Jesus spoke exactly to where John was, and even went on to say, Among them that are born of woman, not one hath risen that's greater than John the Baptist. John is in one of the lowest places of his life. And maybe some of you in this place, if you're honest, have been in a similar place like John. And circumstances that are outside of your control put you in a prison that you did not ask to be in. Maybe it's a co-worker receiving a raise that you think that you deserve, or maybe it's even in the church and you, you start comparing yourself to other people and you start, you start looking at other people and people getting promoted into positions and people receiving favor in their lives. But I, I want someone to understand today that this is not a competition, that we are not in competition with each other, but we are trying to strive towards the mark that God has called us to in Jesus' name. I feel this in the Holy Ghost today. That we begin sometimes to compare ourselves to other people and we begin to gauge our success based off of the measure of someone else instead of the measure that God has given us. And we start to measure our our success off of someone else's obedience instead of being obedient to what God has called us to. And I want to tell someone today, there's a parable in the Bible and God gives a parable of a harvest of a 30-fold, of a 60-fold, and of a 100-fold. And all three of the people that harvest were obedient to God. So they were operating within the will of God. 
They were operating within what God gave to them. And then the, the, the scripture goes on to say that to each of them he gave a measure of faith. So if God has called you to go sit in a corner and you go and sit in that corner, and that's all God's called you to do for right now, then you are in the will of God. If pastor calls you, I want you to sit here for three months, and, then, and that is within the will of God, and if your pastor says it, your pastor is as close to the voice of God as anybody else in your life, I want you to understand that it is the will of God for you to do that. And some of you, maybe you're thinking, I could do this, I could go out, and I could be a minister somewhere else. But if you will begin to be obedient in the small things, if you will begin to say, God, I could have a hundred harvests whenever you have a thirty harvest right now, but it's not God's will for you to do that, then God will begin to tear you down as quick as he began to build you up. But you have to understand that when I'm obedient to what God has called me to do, not what my desires are, not what my flesh wants, not what I'm asking for, but when you begin to say, God, what do you want for my life? God will begin to pour out His blessing so greatly on you that you will not even have room to receive what God wants to pour out on your life. But it starts with saying, God, I put my faith in you and I'm going to take steps with you. In Jesus' name. I don't know why I, I, I'm even telling this, but a couple of weeks ago in, in, in Pastor Corneo's son has done the same thing, but I, I was talking to my wife as we were selling all of our things in our household. and We're about to move to Spain, and we're, we're getting rid of all of our stuff. And, and, and I told my wife, I said, I don't know if I have ever had to live by faith to this moment. I don't know if I've ever had to live by faith on this level. And, and we began to, we're getting rid of stuff that we've invested in. But, and I'm not, telling, I'm not saying this to... to to receive any accolades from you. But what, but what I'm telling you, I could give you story after story. Whenever I began to, I, I was a youth pastor in Nashville for three years, and I began to feel transition in my life, and I didn't understand what God was doing. And, and, and I quit the job that I was at, and I, I, was, I was working at a church there in Nashville, and I come back, and I, I don't even have a job, and I'm just seeking after God's will for my life. And, and, and I have a man in, in, in my father's church walk up to me, and he says, I, I just feel like I need to do this for you. I know that you're going through transition. And, and I said, thank you. And, 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 I, and I, I grabbed what he gave me. I put it in my pocket. And I go home and I sit down in, in my living room. And, I, and I, I put it on the, the living room table there. And I open up and it was a check for $10,000. I don't have a job. I, 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 didn't, I didn't have anything set up. But I want to prophesy to somebody today that if you will begin to just say, God, I'm going to be faithful in the small things. I'm going to be faithful in the waiting. I'm going to be faithful in the delay that God will begin to pour out so much blessing on your life. In Jesus' name, I feel that in the Holy Ghost today. I feel that in the Holy Ghost today. You may have come here today and, and, and you're, you're maybe like Moses and you're, you're in this season of waiting or maybe you're like John the Baptist and, and you've gotten a little bit offended because you've watched someone else around you Receive things that you thought were yours. But God's word is, blessed is he who is not offended by me. If the devil can't get you to sin, he'll, he'll try and get you offended. Proverbs 18 and 19 says, a brother offended is harder to win than a strong man. Sometimes we can get offended in the waiting. Sometimes we can get offended in the process. But, but here's a promise that, that I love to look to. Galatians 6 to 9 says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If you'll just keep on doing the right thing, if you will keep on just going to church, if you will keep on just doing what you're told, if you'll keep on just being obedient to God, there's a harvest for you. There's a harvest for Los Angeles. There's a harvest for this city. There's a harvest for this region that God is going to begin to pour out. But it takes people that are faithful. It doesn't take people that are saying, God, I want what I want. God, I want to be promoted into positions. But it takes people who, who say, God, I just want to be obedient to what you've called me to do. God, I just want to do what you've purposed for me to do. God, I want to be within your will more than what I want. God has a purpose for someone today. God has a plan for someone today. If you will just expect something from Him. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and He shall strengthen 
thine heart wait, I say, on the Lord. If I ascend up into hell, that heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. He may not come whenever you want Him, but He's always there right on time. God's presence is not limited to manifestation. God's presence is not limited to the, the, the miracles being poured out. But sometimes God just wants us to, to have a relationship with Him. Sometimes God just wants us to have a prayer life. Sometimes God just wants us to get up and to talk to Him like we're actually friends with Him. Sometimes God just wants us to say, God, my life is Yours and I've been living on my own accord. I've been living on my own faith. But God, I, I want to do what You've called me to do. And I want I wonder if someone today would just begin to get a burden and say, Lord, maybe I've done it my own way. Maybe I'm tired of doing it the way that I've done it. But Lord, I'm here today in faith saying, God, I want to follow after what your will is for my life. God, I want to follow after you. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel expectancy rising in this place. I wonder if we would just lift our voices right now and just entertain the presence of God in this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Receive that right now. Y'all are love your truck, Holy Ghost. As I come to a close, I want to read one more passage of Scripture. And I believe that goes, this goes in alignment with what God has spoken to this church today. Acts chapter 2 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. and Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. One of the beautiful things about this passage, and sometimes... It's something that we miss. It's that there was a 50-day waiting period before God poured out His Spirit from whenever He was resurrected. And that there were people that were waiting for God's Spirit to be poured out upon them. But when the Spirit was poured out, what we just read, it made God's Spirit accessible to the entirety of the New Testament church. So that means that every single person in this room, if you do not have anything, if you don't have a cent to your name, you have the opportunity to have the Spirit of God with the evidence of speaking. 
And the Bible says that whenever you receive God's spirit, that you receive a power that is greater than anything else. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I wonder if we could all stand in this place today. Because today, I'm going to get all of us to do this. Because each and every one of us need God's Spirit in our lives. Each and every one of us, it's a necessity for God's Spirit to be in our lives. And if you need the Spirit of God today, if you have never been filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, we were talking about activating your faith today. I wonder if you would step out and if you would begin to come to this, the, the front of this place and you would say, God, I'm putting my faith in you today. And I'm saying, I need your spirit. I want your spirit. And what this verse has said is that it's accessible for you today. You have permission to receive the spirit of God today. We've got people coming right now. We've got people coming to the front right now. God's going to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost today. God's going to use somebody today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I'm going to get every, everyone to pray here in a second. But God, God's going to begin to pour out His Spirit. And it, once again, you don't need to be shy today. If you, if you need the Spirit of God, it's something that helps you. The Spirit is, is our helper. God can use you today. In Jesus' name. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, there's water. And we can do that again today. But I wonder if we'd all lift our hands in this place. In Jesus' name. And, and the first step to having God's Spirit in our lives is repentance. And I wonder if, if all across this place, if in your own way, if you've never done it before, you, you, can, you can follow after me. If you, but if you would say, God, forgive me of everything that I have done. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse what's inside of me. Anything that is not of you in this place, God, I give it to you, Jesus. Lord, any sin, I ask you, Lord, to cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. Lord, I turn from sin today, God, and I look to you. We thank you, Jesus, God, for what you're doing here today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God's Spirit's coming in this place right now. God's doing something in this place right now. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's all right. That's all right. I want all of us to lift our hands in this place. God's Spirit is about to rush into this place. If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, God is going to fill you, I feel, in faith right now. And I'm going to say the prayer of faith, and I want the Spirit, God is going to send His Spirit, but I want you to allow it to come into your life. If you've already received the Holy Ghost, I want you to just begin to let it flow. I want you to let it flow. But if you have never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, right now is your moment. I'm going to say.